Hi everyone, my name is Marta Estevez Grossi and I am a researcher at the Leibniz Universität Hannover in Germany. In this video, I will present chapter one, which is entitled Languages in our everyday life. This first chapter of the handbook begins with some general information about languages in the world and how they tend to naturally evolve and change over time and space. It also shows how we are all surrounded by different languages and ways of speak, focusing on individual multilingualism, that is, the ability of a person to speak two or more languages. At the time as we wrote chapter one, it was estimated that there were over 7,100 languages still spoken and si or signed in the world. But those numbers change rapidly, and while some languages just keep gaining new speakers, such as English, uh, Spanish or French, others just keep losing them or even disappear altogether. That is because, although from a linguistic point of view there are no superior or inferior languages, from a social and political perspective some languages are considered more prestigious than others, and speakers of low prestige languages, such as minority languages or languages in a migration context, often feel pressure to speak the dominant majority language and abandon the minority one. As we will see in more detail in chapter 2, each language is valuable since it conveys historical, cultural and social knowledge and embodies different perspectives on life and the world. In order to discuss with your students about the importance of multilingualism and the importance of preserving as many languages as possible, you can use the quote of George Steiner, who once said, when a language dies, a way of understanding the world dies with it, a way of looking at the world. In section 1.2, we then focus on language change. We do not know exactly when human speech emerged, but it is believed that it must have happened between the year 30,000 and 20,000 BC. We do not know either if all languages can be traced back to just one initial language or if different languages appeared more or less simultaneously in different places. But we do know that some languages are related to others, and their similarities suggest that they have a common origin or emerge from an original parent language. This is the basis of the linguistic theory called the language family tree model. According to that theory, languages can be organized into language families and subfamilies, represented by the branches of a family tree. As we see, language can be regarded as a living organism which naturally tends to evolve. There are many factors that might influence language change, being the geographical movement of people one of the clearest factors. When people migrate, the language of the group that lives and the language of the group that stays behind tend to develop and evolve in different ways and therefore diverge from each other. Also, when different languages come into contact, they tend to influence one another. The English language, for instance, has incorporated a great number of words from the many languages with which it has come into contact. Another important factor for language change is time, since pronunciation, meaning, grammar or spelling tend to change over time. To introduce your students to the topic of multilingualism, you can use activity 1A, which consists on a language trivia game to put your students' general knowledge about languages to the test. You can let your students take the quiz, either using printouts or on an electronic device with internet access. Your students will for sure enjoy a little competition and you can even present the winning team with a language trivia award. In section 1.3, we start by exploring multilingualism in our societies and how we are surrounded by different languages on a daily basis, even if we often fail to notice it. Contrary to what is commonly believed, monolingualism in the world is not the norm, but rather the exception. And this is logical if we take into account that even though there are over 7,100 languages still alive and kicking across the planet, there are only around 200 countries in the world. 
In that respect, completely monolingual countries are really hard to find. And although regional and minority languages, of course, do account for a large part of the world's linguistic diversity, we should not forget the many languages that migrants bring with them to their host countries, which are also a source, source of linguistic and cultural diversity all over the world. Activity 1B encourages their students to open their eyes to the multilingual and multicultural society they live in by doing a linguistic landscape project. This consists on capturing the different languages present on, in public uh, spaces, such as street names, graffiti, notes and ads, signs, words, flyers, and so on. In small groups, they are encouraged to take pictures of multilingual signs in their neighborhood or town and bring the most interesting ones to discuss them in class. Later on, in section 1.3, we focus on individual multilingualism, which, as already mentioned, is the ability of a person to speak two or more languages. Traditionally, it was thought that only people who achieved native-like proficiency in each of the languages they spoke could be considered uh, true bilinguals or true multilinguals. But nowadays we know that this native-like proficiency of two or more languages is actually pretty uncommon, and the vast majority of bilinguals and multilinguals do not have the same degree of proficiency in all their languages, and that's totally fine. For that reason, many linguists see bilingualism or multilingualism not as a state that can eventually be achieved, but rather a process in which language proficiency can change over time. If we take this broader understanding of bilingualism and multilingualism, even beginner learner, learners of a foreign language could be regarded as bilinguals. What is more, monolinguals and bilinguals alike do have at their disposal different registers, styles, dialects, accents and jargons, which also could be considered a kind of multilingualism. Additionally, bilinguals can also mix and switch between languages when talking to other bilinguals. Doing so is a natural and normal part of bilingual linguistic behavior and does, not, and does not mean that those bilinguals are confused or unable to communicate properly in either of the languages, as it was once wrongly believed. Activity 1C allows your students to reflect in an artistic way on their own multilingualism and the role different languages, dialects, registers and ways of speaking play in their lives. It might be fun for them to compare results with their friends and classmates. Um, activity 1D takes a playful approach to multilingualism by providing one single text written mixing five different languages. It can also be fun for your students to try to decipher the text together, discovering how languages are connected to each other and becoming aware of their own multilingualism and that of their classmates. Last but not least, you will find three extra activities related to this first chapter in the resource bank. I hope you enjoy reading chapter one and you and your students find the proposed activities fun and interesting.